We're gonna go over a strategy that I personally use in my business to create a massive amount of content in a short period of time without burning out and being happy in the process. Literally, you know, enjoying the process, not feeling like I have a second job or that I have to do these things. It is a strategy that I put in my own life to actually create, you know, spontaneous thoughts and passion and love and happiness in the process of the work that I do to create value in the marketplace. So that strategy, I call it the 90-90-90 rule, okay? 90-90-90 rule, which is 90 days to prepare the four major questions in life that you must answer. Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? Where am I going? 90 days to figure that out. 90 days to logically create a plan that answers those questions, meaning starting a business so that we can 10X, right? So getting the proper tools, the equipment, everything that we could possibly need or think we need, we're going to get in those 90 days. And then we're going to establish different things in those 90 days as well so that we can best be prepared. And then the next 90 days is to actually create the value that your business is set out to do. So that would be creating content, whether it's video, audio, or written, one of the three. Um, and then the final 90 days is to actually execute what you prepped for and what you created. So executing, meaning you have everything established, you got your business, you got your name, you got your brand, you have your accounts, you have your business checking account, you have everything set up and you've created the content. Now it just needs to get posted live for the world to see. And so you're gonna create a schedule where you're gonna consistently post every single day for 90 days. So technically, we'll have 180 days to prep and create all that content, and then 90 days of execution consistently. And then what happens is you wash and repeat. What will happen is you can eliminate the first 90 days to prepare once you are on, once you're in this 90 days right here of execution. So once you're 180 days out, right, and you're ready to execute your business publicly and, and, and create the value and post publicly, comment, get likes, get views, all that stuff. During those 90 days, since you prepared and created everything and created the schedule to post everything, guess what? There's no work to be done. It's on automatic. It'll, every single day, will automatically post things each and every day. You won't have to do any work whatsoever. Simply watch your own content is one thing you can do. Comment on your own content and reply to comments, views, likes, uh, mentions, shout outs, things like that. So during those 90 days of execution, you will be creating another, you know, 90 days, you'll have 90 days to create more content in the 90 days that you're posting stuff. So the postings on automatic, now you're taking the time to create uh, more content for the next 90 days. And then when you approach the end of that first execution of 90 days, guess what? You have the content to keep it going on a nice cycle and it becomes the most, um, simplest way for me and I think it would work for you to uh, to produce and a, a massive amount of content where people will question how do you do it how do you have you know kids and a wife a husband and a home and bills and work and now you got the business and how are you able to do all this everything requires a process once you get the process and you've mastered the process, then what happens 
is it doesn't take you 90 days anymore to create, prepare, and execute. It'll drop down to maybe 45 days or half the time or a third of the time and you just get, all right, now let's go into the meat and potatoes. I gave you the overview. Now let's go into the actual, the stuff, all right? So let's say, for example, you are making 3,500 a month. Your expenses are 2,500. Um, this is including everything, saving, tithing, giving, investing, whatever it is. Those are your expenses. You have a $250,000 mortgage, right? And your cash flow is a thousand bucks. So from the other class, we, we had originally 270,000 in debt. We wiped out a car in like a year, did velocity banking, cash flow went up to a thousand. Um, we have a personal line of credit unsecured for 15,000, 10%, a credit card for 15,000. I just wrote another number, 21%. Um, and so we are, we've been doing velocity banking for a year and now we're questioning, okay, should I take the next four to seven years, five to seven years to pay off that $250,000 mortgage with this income expense and cash flow with these credit lines, which I can surely do, right? Very simple, right? Keep the plan going. Or do I want to go ahead and 10 X? At the same time, I can pay off debt and actually go much faster than four to seven years. I could probably be done in like two or three. Some uh, other options just in general so you know uh, for people that want to do this. In terms of debt tools, we have PLOCs, credit cards, secured credit lines, HELOC in the first and second position, uh, policy for the infinite banking concept, right? High cash value. Uh, assets, 401k, IRA, whatever you got, capital, we could use to 10x your life, 10x your income, 10x your business, okay? Now, with all the information that I know now, if I had to restart from the beginning, 2018 August, with all the information that I know right now, here is what I would do to establish myself, create a foothold, build my foundation so I can 10X my income even faster. Me personally, I was able to 10X in about nine to 10 months, not even knowing what to do. So I can only imagine that you and I, with the information that we're sharing together here today, if you were to actually execute, you could probably do it in faster you know, faster than nine months, 10 months, you're probably going, you know, six, four, whatever it is. Um, we're not going to count this time in your, in your 10X time frame, right? It'll count once you're public, once you're official, right? Once you're out there, then you count how many days, um, how long did it take me to 10X? When you're in prep mode, you don't count those. That's, that's you preparing. Now, you want to be careful. There's a reason why I say 90 days. I don't say six months, one year, because that leads to procrastination. And we do not want to procrastinate. We want to be very firm and disciplined, just like you are with Velocity Banking and Infinite Banking. We're taking those same disciplines and applying it to 10X your income. All right? So the very first thing that I would do, okay, if I was you and let, I'm going to pretend I'm you and you're me in this position right here. Okay. And you're just starting out. Okay. And you're like, all right, I want to have what he has, or I want to be like Tony Robbins, or I want to be like Dean Graciosi, Ty Lopez, Grant Cardone. I want to be like these major players in my own industry. Okay. So you have the desire. You need that. You got to have the mindset. These are the stuff that I'm not going to really get into. The mindset, the desire, the, you know, the purpose, right? You kind of have to have that instinctively. If you don't, this will, this might upset you because you may not be able to live up to that, that standard of 10X. You got to have it within. It has to come from within. Nobody can really teach you. Uh, it just has to come from within. And if you are gifted enough, then there's a chance. Even when you are super gifted, there's still a rare chance that you'll make it, okay? So you have to know that going in. You have to know that 
99.9% .9 of people will fail. You have to know that going into this or you will disappoint yourself. You will expect something but not get what you want, okay? So you have to expect to fail so that you can succeed. You have to expect to fall down, break a bone, get bloody, uh, cry, yell. You have to expect pain, suffering, obstacles, challenges, the worst of the worst. When you expect that, now you are positioning yourself to really hold what, I forgot the scripture, but you know, God tells us to, you know, pick up his shield and his sword and wear the helmet to protect your mind and your soul and your spirit and things so he will guide you. And when you surrender your will for his will, he then puts his will on you and now you really can't fail. Okay, so if you have God backing you up on your desires, your wants, your purpose in life, you really can't go wrong, right? So when you make it about something else other than you, that's an even more authentic way for you to really, really produce something that would last forever, such as a kingdom, okay? So with that being said, let's go into it. First thing you need to do, establish a business. Very first thing. Where? Well, for me, I found that the most affordable thing so far, and maybe there's something else out there, but Legal Shield for Business. There is a link in the description below on this video and every one of my videos. Um, Legal Shield does personal and business protection, establishment, um, maintenance, things like that. Uh, very, very affordable. When I established my first LLC, it cost me, I think, $1,100, almost $1,200. With Legal Shield, it's $149 plus state and filing fees. So maybe $500 at the end of the day. Here in Florida, it might be lower because it's not that much for state and filing fees. I think it's like $250 or something like that. And, you know, if you're in California, I'm assuming it's going to be triple because um, everything's more expensive over there. So it just depends on what state you're in but it's $149 everywhere plus state and filing fees. And they, they really do something unique. I've seen it with my own eyes with a friend that like had his, I'm like, damn man, you paid much less than what I did and it looked like you got more. I love seeing that. So that would be one of the first things that I do. The money that you use to fund and initially start your business, is gonna be based off what you have, right? Your income, your spends, debt, cash flow, right? Whatever. Um, you could use your line of credit, your credit card to initially pay for things. Be sure to track everything because you can eventually translate all that into business expenses as a reimbursement to yourself. However, your CPA will eventually uh, you know, set that up for you. So. We want to establish the business. Before we establish the business, we want to think of a name. Think of a brand name. It could be your first and last name. But if you are in an industry like health, fitness, finance, you do, you can use your name. That's the easiest thing to do, your first and last name, dot com, first and last name at Gmail, right? First and last name, like everything on all your accounts. Just you want to be very, very clean and consistent. But if you have a thought in your mind of a name outside of your very own that you were born with, such as a brand name, think about it, ponder on it, pray, and then see if it can be trademarked, see if it's already trademarked, because if it's trademarked already, then you can't use it, right? So for example, my name is Denzel Napoleon Rodriguez. That's how I started out. And then I became the finance geek. So that is trademarked. I own it. No one can use it. Whoever uses it, I can say, hey, you got to cease and desist, my friend, right? Um, but in the beginning, it's probably easiest to just use your first name and last name. But if you do have a name, like I said, go ahead, use it. Uh, think of a brand name. See if it can be trademarked. That'll help you for long term. You wanna buy equipment for content creation. I would say to start small, work your way up. 
You don't have to spend five grand on a camera or, you know, buy a thousand dollar microphone. You really don't. I would encourage you to watch some of my very first videos and compare it to this video right now. You will be alarmed. You'd be like, I can't hear him. I can barely see him. I can't see the board. The light's terrible, but it has the most views out of my whole channel, which is insane, right? So with that being said, that is physical proof, tangible proof that you do not need it all to start, okay? You want to start small, work your way up. Be practical. Focus everything on what you have, what you're willing to spend on, okay? So with that being said, um, you want to definitely, I'm going to skip over this one real quick. You want to create a budget and a time schedule based on your chunk for velocity banking. That's 66% of your line of credit if you're going to use debt to fund your business. Um, or whatever initial capital you have to work with, such as the thousand dollars a month in cash flow. You could say, wait, you could wait six months and accumulate the cash flow, but since we're velocity banking people and we're infinite banking people, we like to leverage. We like to use debt. It saves time, right? So that's why I'm saying, okay, create your budget and time schedule based on your chunk and whatever initial capital you have with. So in this particular situation, anywhere from 10 to 12K is going to be my funding budget, meaning 10 to 12,000 is gonna be used to establish the business. Um, I'm gonna use Legal Shield to create the business and then get business protection. They have plans, they have personal and business plans to protect you legally and with identity, especially if you're creating content. You are going to have so many passwords and so many social media accounts and so many things that it is wise to get something like Legal Shield. There are other options out there. I personally have a Legal Shield plan. I love it. Uh, never had an issue. Uh, everything is, you know, secure and, and organized in one place. So that really, really helps. Um, let's see. So when you are. So once you've got the business, got the name, okay, you get the equipment, you've created a budget and a schedule in this particular situation, 10 to 12,000. Now what we're going to do is you're going to pick your favorite platform to create the content that you want to be on. So let me give you some thoughts. Here are the platforms to be on right now, okay? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, podcasts. I would say personally, out of these, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and podcasts are like the best platforms for education, information, um, breakdowns, how-tos, do-it-yourself, right, type of content. If you want to be sexy, if you want to be attractive, if you want to bring in a lot of attention in a short period of time and your product or service is like sexy, right? It's either showing your body, it's clothes, it's fitness, wellness, health, it's, it's the attractive stuff. You're going to want to be on Instagram for sure, Snapchat and TikTok. It's quick stuff. It's like, you know, it's like a lot, okay? And so that's where you want to be. But if you are in education and your, your education is also a little bit of entertainment, kind of like what I'm doing, you want to be on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, podcasts. TikTok is pretty huge right now in terms of engagement. I understand that. But in terms of education and like the best suitable user-friendly platform, someone that's going to sit there and just watch you for a long period of time, you're going to want to be on like YouTube, Facebook, um, Instagram, because they have IGTV. Uh, LinkedIn is also good. Podcast is one of the best in terms of uh, engagement and I would say like, like attention. Like the average listener on podcasts, I think I, I heard something, I think it was like 18 minutes or 10 to 18 minutes. That's a long time for someone to just sit there and listen to you talk for 10 minutes. 
that's super long in the world of internet, right? You could have a conversation in person with someone for 30 minutes, but when you're like looking through information, you'd be surprised how long you'll watch a video that's educational. You'd be like, ah, you know, you, like the first minute you're gone. If it's not like, if they didn't capture you in the first 30 seconds, you're out, right? So when you're on the other side, when you're the creator of the content, you gotta be thinking that way. Am I interesting? Am I boring? Am I attractive, right? Based on these things, you'll find your favorite platform. So if you are someone that is a spontaneous, outgoing person, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, you know, might be your thing. If you're low key, um, what's it called? Introvert, podcast might be your thing. If you have an amazing voice, an attractive voice, you don't have to be physically attractive, but if you are attractive on the voice, podcast is where you want to be. So all in all, pick your favorite platform, one, okay? Here's, here's my strategy. Others will say other things. I'm not a content expert or content creator, but what I am is a success story. So I can use that to then give to you and say, here, I did this. It could work for you. It may not. We'll see where we go from there. So what, let's say you picked your favorite platform. Let's just use me in a, as an example. My favorite platform was, is YouTube, okay? So for 90 days, I'm preparing. I picked my platform. I've established a business, got some protection, got my name. Um, my name is gonna be used for everything. It's going to be the name of all of my social media accounts, all of my email, my website, my business name, everything's gonna be uniform, okay? I've created a budget and a time schedule. I, I'm starting small in terms of my equipment. All I need is a phone, a simple mic, Rode, 70 bucks, 80 bucks, right? Um, the camera, okay? The camera could be the phone, so that's the video, the audio, and, and you just plug it up and you're good. You get a nice little extension, right? Or maybe you do something wireless, right? So I have a wireless mic that I attach right to my pants right here so you can't see what's below. And then I have like a nice little mic right here. It's low key hidden, but you can still see it, right? Nothing crazy, simple, simple stuff. It took me one whole year before I actually spent five to $7,000 on good equipment so what you're looking at me through is a canon m50 yeah eos m50 canon with like a 600 hour lens attached to it i'm using lighting from this office this office is like you know the rent is 650 a month so i get lighting from here but when you see other videos that i've done you'll see some real like production type lighting the lighting alone, that was like a thousand bucks. I have two Canons. And then this microphone, the freaking Rode mic, that was like $300 itself. Um, I also bought this freaking thing right here for podcasts. See this thing, this thing's no joke, right? It's like 500, I think, 300, I don't even know. You get to a point where you don't even look at the price once you've 10X, and that is a great thing. You don't even look at price and you're like, huh, I need it, get it, got it, nice, okay? Um, so let's say we've picked our favorite platform. You've established your business. You got your information, your titles, your tags, your, your, so far, you're almost done in your prep stage in your 90 days. The other thing you're going to want to do is you want to get on platforms to receive the money. You need to be able to receive your 10 X when you're doing business online, you have an online e-commerce business, you're gonna be receiving money online if you're creating content. So, what I did over the course of the first nine months, 10 months of my business, is I made a PayPal account, it's free. I made a Stripe account, it's free. Website, somewhat free. There are free platforms, Squarespace, Wix, like they have a free version, then there's paid. Obviously paid, you get more than free, but hey, you can start things off small. Like I said, according to your budget, with 10 to 12,000 to work with, I don't mind spending a few dollars to get a website made. 
Um, you can use GoFundMe. Um, Patreon is another one. I didn't write it on here. The reason why I did not write Patreon is I'm starting to see that it, it's quite expensive to be on their platform. I have a, a membership, like I'm basically grandfathered from their previous pricing. So when I started Patreon, it was cheaper. But if you were to open a Patreon account now, it costs more. And it's like really stupid. It's like, I'm, I'm like, damn, like that's a lot um, that they're taking off the top. And I, and I looked for myself, like I made over $100,000 on Patreon, but what I took home, um, I wanna say they took about 20% in fees, right? That's a lot, that's a lot. If I would've had everything going through a website, cause that's basically what Patreon is. It's like you get this nice, clean looking website to collect money pretty, pretty quickly. So maybe you use it for a temporary period of time, but maybe not forever, okay? Um, so PayPal is great when you create your invoices, when you've created your service and your product that you're gonna provide. PayPal charges, I think, 3% or less for credit card transactions, things like that. Stripe is the same thing, although I think it's a little bit less. Um, website, the website is where people land when they see your content and they click on the description below, right? So if you were to click on any of my descriptions that are my products and services, it's gonna take you to a landing page. Boom, my website. And then from there, you're able to make a purchase. Stripe authorizes the purchase or PayPal will authorize it as a legitimate purchase, okay? GoFundMe is just a great way to say, hey, I'm starting this business. These are my, my four major questions. Here's why I'm doing this. Who am I? What's my purpose in life? Where am I going, right? Those. And you're, you're basically sharing your story and saying, hey, um, if you find value in what I do, can you please help me? Can you help me? Can you help me, right? And, and that really does make a difference. When you ask for help, you shall receive it works okay just take some time the thing that i would totally do is i would open a google adsense account and a google my business account anything google make it make a google business email a google my business account and a google adsense these are going to be like critical when you start using seo down the road and you start paying for traffic right so that coming back to this right here is when you're gonna create your content, you can start organically and work your way to paid, or you do paid plus organic, either or. If you wanna have a minimal budget, I prefer organic. It's just you creating content and you posting on these free platforms. They don't cost anything to be on them, right? When you put money into it, then you you know you get your marketing costs, but the, uh, the Google Business, the Google AdSense, it does not cost money and they're linked <clears throat> to some of these platforms so that when you start monetizing your content, you're already set up to receive the funds. So for my first year of doing YouTube, technically we could say a year and six months because from August 2018 till now, so you say a year and six months, year and seven months. Um, YouTube alone, I'm at six grand. So that's $6,000 of no work, right? Or work I did one time and then I get little, you know, you'll see if you do not have a YouTube premium account, you will uh, get an ad. It'll pop up, bum, at the beginning, towards the end, somewhere in the middle, however it works. The more of those I put on my videos, then they send me money for free. And then over time, you might get sponsored by a big corporation, a company that sees what type of content you're putting out. So if you're putting out fitness content, what would be a great sponsorship to have? Something in fitness, clothing, uh, you know, gloves. And it's like you're basically working out 
with the gloves on and you get sponsored to do that. And it was like, wow, it didn't cost you anything. So in the first 90 days, these are the platforms we need to create accounts on. We're gonna pick our favorite one. Here are the platforms I need to create to receive the money. You could use other ones. I'm giving you the ones that I used. I used Squarespace as my website to start out. Now I have ClickFunnels, Kajabi, much more expensive stuff. Um, Legal Shield for establishing the business and then protecting it, your name, your accounts and all that. The name, um, getting the equipment, right? You got your time and your schedule. The next thing I would do is set up affiliate accounts or build a team. You could do both, one or the other, however you see fit. When I first started out, I used affiliates, meaning like if there was a product or service that I needed in my own business, I was reaching out to that person to say, hey, I'm a content creator. I'd love to team up with you. Can I put your link on my videos and you pay me a referral fee per lead type of deal? And for doing that, if I bring you X amount of leads per month, you'll provide me your service for free. That's a great way to save money and that's negotiation skills. That's a win-win. So instead of me just paying you money, I'm saying, hey, I can give you more than money. Leads, attention, views, likes, right? I can build you while I build me, especially if it's in line with what I do. So for example, Legal Shield is in line with a lot of the things that I teach. So I became an affiliate. I now refer Legal Shield's product on my videos every now and then not too often but every now and then and every now and then lead a lead a lead a lead right same thing with ibc global ibc global i found the infinite banking concept i said wow i said hey i'm a content creator love to partner with you could you write all the policies that i send your way and you pay me a commission for doing nothing but sending you a lead so basically people like you We'll click on the link below. They're like, oh my God, Denzel's really talking about this infinite banking. This sounds great. Let me verify. Let me do my research. Let me learn. And then you get to the point where you're like, oh my God, I'm there. And then you click on the link and it'll say, who did, who were you referred by? Denzel. Boom. Now that IBC, they create a policy just for you. You're in love. They're in love. I'm in love. Win, win, win. Right? So setting up affiliate accounts is going to be great. So now here's the formula for creating the content. So now let's say in those 90 days, I'm prepared. I've done everything that I did that Denzel said on the board here. I'm there 90 days in. Now it's 90 days of creation, creating content. The most effective way for me was to do video because video I can repurpose into a blog post, into a post, uh, I, can, I can strip the audio and use it as a podcast. So there's so many things that I can do with video. I can take a long video and split it up into five videos and really break it apart. This is what I do on my YouTube channel is we'll do this live class right here. It'll be an hour plus long, but then every time I answer a question from you, that'll be literally a video. Someone says, what is a line of credit? In this video, I answer it. A line of credit is da 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 That'll be two minutes long. That's a piece of content. Boom, right? So let me give you the formula. If I create 90 original pieces of content in 90 days, whether you do it one a day or you batch in together, right? If you have a schedule, like, okay, I'm gonna take five to 10 hours a week for the next four weeks, to get 90 videos, right? So 90 is the goal. Whether you do it in 90 days or less, doesn't matter. Just have those windows, create, be disciplined. You wanna reach that. It's not hard to make 90 pieces of content in 90 days based on the things I just told you, right? So for example, I could make one video, but it can turn into many pieces of content. I will explain how. So 90 original pieces of content. You've got your phone, light, Camera, audio, visual, you're good to go. 90 original pieces of content. 
you then upload all of that content to your favorite platform. So let's say it's YouTube. So option one is you can upload all of the raw content to YouTube and then you can pay someone to edit the content for you or you do it yourself. Before you upload it, you upload it, um, you send it to your laptop or you edit it right on your phone, then send it to the laptop, then upload it to the platform that you wanna use. So you're gonna wanna find an editing software if you're gonna be editing from a laptop. From your phone, I use an app called Videorama, V-I-D-E-O, Rama, R-A-M-A, Videorama. It's like $16, I think you can, pay, you can pay it one time and you'll have it for life. And it's a very cool, unique editing software right from your phone. So what I do is I edit all my stuff and then I can upload right from the uh, app in HD and everything to the platform that I wanna upload it to. I can upload it to any one of these platforms, right? Except for podcasts, because it's not video, okay? So all these can take video. Um, so you, you, can, you can edit and then you can upload using Videorama from your phone. When you upload content to that favorite platform, you can have it preset, so on YouTube, on your channel settings, you can preset to upload everything privately so that nobody sees it. I want you to do this on purpose. I want you to upload everything privately or unlisted so nobody sees it. You're just gathering the content. You're not posting it just yet. You've created the platforms, you got your name, but you're not posting anything just yet. You're simply creating, 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 creating in those 90 days. Now, if you do that, you have 90 original pieces of content, you can then repurpose that 90 and, re and repost the same content on every other platform that you create. So there's eight platforms there, right? Two, four, six, yeah, there's eight platforms. So <clears throat> half, four platforms, you would have technically 360 pieces of content. 360 pieces of content. You're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Sure it does. I created 90 original pieces of content. The number 90, right? Every digital footprint that you put on the internet is content. Whether it's a comment, a reply to a comment, a DM, a post, a picture, a video, everything counts as content. So if you post a picture on Instagram, that's one piece of content. But then if you take that picture and post it on eight other platforms, that's now nine pieces of content, okay? And so if you follow a guy like Gary Vaynerchuk, he says that you should be posting 100 times a day. And I didn't really know how to make sense of that, but once I started like really creating a plan that works for me, so 100 pieces of content just doesn't work for me. It doesn't make me happy. But I can make sense of posting a lot of content over a long period of time consistently. That makes me happy. So for me, my number is 90. And then I repurpose, post on four of the platforms, that's 360 pieces of content. The most, if you were to do eight platforms, 720 pieces of content. So what that breaks down to is literally four to eight posts per day for 90 days, right? So now you've created in 90 days and you're gonna follow this formula and now you're going to find Right in those 90 days of creation, you're also going to uh, find a platform. You're gonna find a platform to schedule all your posts. Okay, they're out there. I don't know what website to use. I haven't found one yet. If somebody knows 
of a platform that can link all of these social media accounts to one platform and then I can literally schedule all my posts. So basically I'm uploading everything to one thing and then it gets posted at the same time on all platforms at the same exact time. I know it exists, I just don't know the website for it. So if somebody does know, please comment. Don't just comment in the chat box, definitely comment under the video as well so people can see that because that'll be super valuable. So we're gonna leave that box blank. But you're going to wanna do that. Find a That's gonna make your life super easy. Now, there are some platforms, YouTube, Facebook, where there's a scheduling system in there already. So you don't have to uh, use a separate platform. But if you're gonna be using all these platforms, you do wanna find something that is efficient for your time, okay? So that's gonna be powerful. And then you rinse and repeat, okay? So during the 90 days of execution, once you have all the content and you've created the schedule, you're basically going to drop content every single day for 90 days on automatic because everything was already uploaded. That was all the hard work. All you have to do now is create a title for each video, description, put some links in the description, your website where people can give you money and pay for your programs and services, your affiliate links, you attach everything, you do it really, really clean, really simple, keep everything simple. You can get complex as you grow. The reason why I'm saying this is because you, you want to not only 10x, but you wanna, you wanna have fun doing it, right? You wanna have fun doing it, you wanna enjoy the process, and you don't wanna burn out. And here's how you not burn out. Here's how you don't burn out, for me. So I keep it my 90, 90, 90. So during the 90 days of execution, everything's being posted, and you're restarting over here, 90 days to create again. And then you can create a schedule. You're like, okay, do I wanna post every single day? Or do I wanna post three times a week, four times a week, whatever it is. Whatever you do choose, it would still apply where you post multiple times during those days that you chose to post new content, right? So what you, what you could do to be slick is you could take that 90 pieces of original content, and I've done this before, you have one video <clears throat> and you post it on Monday on YouTube. And then on Tuesday, you post it on LinkedIn. On Wednesday, you post it on Facebook. On Thursday, you post it on Instagram. On Friday, you post it on Snapchat, TikTok, podcast. Like, it's that seven days of content. You could do that, right? Um, I just don't. Not anymore because I have so much content now. So I was able to like really, really not have to do that. But you could do that if you don't create the original 90 pieces of content. So if you don't hit that number and you wanna be able to post consistently, you could kind of drag it out. Another thing that you can do to help alleviate the pressure is you can let people know when you're gonna post by creating content about the content. So if you have this exclusive video dropping on Wednesday, on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you could post on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, da, 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 right? Just warning people, letting people know, hey, new video is gonna be dropped on Wednesday, 12 o'clock Eastern time, be there. Or Friday, hey, I'm going live, be there. I've done this before, so I, I'm basically amping you up. This works great once you have the audience works amazing, right? Notice how I got 45 people on a Sunday at five o'clock Eastern time, 47 now, to be with me personally, live, right? Yesterday, what there was like 80 people in the room and that was no promotion. I didn't promote at all. I just showed you that I was being live, did like one post. If I actually like, like set it up, in advance and posted and sent emails out consistently, oh my goodness, I'd have hundreds of people in here because now I have 10,000 plus subscribers, right? So in the beginning, it may or may not work in terms of 
letting people know what you got going on because nobody's following you in the in the first place when you first start out. So it's best to put out original, new, valuable, evergreen, consistent, effective content, great content that you can think on that's going to be very valuable. And that's why you give yourself 90 days to prep, 90 days to create, 90 days to execute, rinse and repeat. Okay?